Hello and welcome. In this video, we have five essential tips and tricks for Adobe Illustrator. Tip number one, swap bill and stroke. Now this first tip's nice and easy. In Illustrator, if you hit the X key, it will switch the stroke and the bill within the swatches in the tool panel. But if you want to do this in a live shape, all you have to do is select the shape, hold shift and then hit X. And as you can see, that just flips the colors. Super easy to do, but saves you lots of time. On to tip number two, edit type on a path more easily. So let's take this logo. We have type on a circular path. Now I want the type on the bottom half to be flipped so it reads in the correct way and isn't upside down. So I'm gonna use the direct selection tool by pressing the A key and then select that bottom semicircle of text. Then I'm gonna to come to type, type on path, then type on path options. There's lots you can do in this window, but I'm gonna click flip and preview so we can see what's happened there. Now I want this aligned to the ascender so it fits within the same circle as the text in the top half of the logo. So as you can see, that's got us 90% of the way there, but we're still not fully aligned. And one thing you do is just manually make this circle smaller and then reset the text to be the same size as the top. But a much easier way is to come into your character window and adjust the baseline like so. I'm then just going to adjust the tracking so there's an even space between the top half and the bottom half text. And that's now looking much more balanced overall. This brings me on to my next tip, character spacing shortcuts. So just looking again at this logo, you can see the kerning between some of the letters is a bit off. The space between the L, the O and the N is quite wired compared to say the Y and the S. So I'm just going to come in and manually amend that. Now you can do this directly within the character panel, but I like to use shortcuts. So if you select the type tool by pressing the T key, then click between the letters you want to adjust. I can then just hold option and press left and right on the keyboard to adjust the kerning and quite quickly get that spacing looking a lot tidier. You can also adjust the tracking in the same way by selecting all of the text and again holding option and pressing left and right on the keyboard. You can also use this shortcut to adjust your leading. So let's say you have multiple lines of text. I'm just going to select that, hold option and press up and down on the keyboard. So that's left and right for kerning and tracking and up and down for leading. Tip number four is a massive time saver and that is duplicate. So let's just take this square for an example. I'm gonna hold option shift and drag that to the right to copy it. Now, if I just keep that selected, press command D, that's going to duplicate the shape. And I can do that as many times as I want. You can also combine this with the rotate tool. So let's take this long rectangle, hit R for rotate, and then click where we want the central point of our circle to be. I'm then gonna hold option and drag that round to rotate it. Then again, keeping that shape selected, I just hit Command D and it will continue to copy and rotate the object the same amount that I made the first increment. And I saved the best till last today, my final tip being the image trace tool. Now this is just great for vectorizing any image. And I'm also going to show you how to recolor those images once vectorized. So let's start with an easy example. Right here we've got a deer etching, which is a flat JPEG and I want to turn it into a vector. And we could do a default image trace, but if we do that we're going to lose a lot of detail. So what I find better is to come into the image trace window by clicking window and coming down to image trace. Now if we select our image, make sure we've got preview turned on. I'm going to change the preset to sketch art. You can see a preview of how that's going to trace. To ensure we don't lose any detail, we're going to turn our paths and corners way up and turn the noise down and then hit expand. And if we zoom in, you can see that's preserved lots of the detail whilst turning it into a vector. Now that's vector, we can easily change colors or make edits with tools such as the puppet walk tool. And now for a slightly more complex example. If you've got an image with lots of colors that you want to turn into a vector whilst preserving those colors, make sure you've got color selected in mode and then you can come and select how many colors you want to have in the trace. Now I want this to look slightly more graphic. So I'm going to bring this down to 10 and hit preview. And again, turn paths and corners up. It's going to take a little longer with more colors. Now I'm going to show you how to easily recolor this. So I'm going to select that and come to recolor artwork. And you see we've got a color wheel displaying all of the different colors we have in this illustration. Now, if we've got the padlock turned on, we can just come and rotate this to completely change the color palette. Now, let's say I really like this vibrant pink and blue color tone of the flowers, but I don't really like the sort of dull green color of the leaves. So I'll unlock that and just come and change those specific colors. And it will change every instance of that color in the document. So that's a bonus tip for you there and really worth integrating into your workflow. And you can do some really creative work by mastering the image trace tool with the color theme picker. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching today, guys. I hope you found it helpful. For more creative tips and tricks, just click through to my next video.